like they're, they're coming to a person's head almost like a fully formed idea and we don't know where it's come from. You'll find where these generalizations which usually fit most people, to some degree if they look long enough, hard enough, will in fact fit. Sometimes the generations seem quite similar. I may say, for instance, your father, when it might have been your grandfather, because obviously every grandfather and grandmother has been a mother and father. How old was he? I don't know why, but they show me five. So the He's five really thing with me damaging to their anniversary is in the film. relationship with something a, about the fifth with a medium who, not with somebody else. Medium, not with the medium who practices the codes. But what are mediums like in spiritualist churches? Damaging to a person. Every move that you make is recorded in the air. A stage event in a spiritualist church can very often go like this. The link I'll be working with is very tenuous one, so communication with the loved ones in the greater world is often done through symbols and thought transference, and it's my job to interpret these. And of course, the spirit people don't have a physical voice, so it's sometimes quite difficult. It's done mind to mind, so if you bear that in mind, there might be an opening prayer, there might not be, depending on the style of the event. There may well be an inspirational ramble, or whatever you wish to call it, so-called philosophy from the medium. Perhaps it's going to be some music played by the person leading the service alongside the medium. The inspirational music will be to raise the vibration, whereas in a more traditional service they will have hymns or perhaps modern songs sung by the audience. The configuration varies based on the style of the organisation involved. When it comes down to the actual mediumship, they're meant to be giving from their guides or through their guides or perhaps directly. So-called gatekeepers who are meant to be the ones who are meant to be your middle man or middle person between you and the spirit world. Or whatever the case may be, the lingo varies. The ideas vary depending if you're talking about a traditional medium or something more new age or whatever the case may be. I'd like to come to the lady in the red coat with the turquoise scarf around her neck, please. I have a grandmother here from mother's side of the family. This is yes. your mother's mother and she's linking here with you. A very powerful lady, but um, although she was powerful, she wasn't aggressive in any way, but she was a very clever lady. She was um, learned not in the sense of um, reading books, but in everything that she did. She just had a natural intelligence with her. Typically, mediums call it a message, not a reading. It's not a reading of you, the individual. It's meant to be a communication. Age is meant to play a role in this because very often they go to people and give out information based on their age. Memories, ideas, things that you could obviously predict if you knew any other human being on the planet, you can basically make fit to some degree. You can focus on things of a certain era based on the person you're looking at, including common names, common ideas, music, etc., to basically fluff out a reading. So based on age, they might give out some names, George, Jim, uh, John, Jean, you know, especially with old people, older names are more appropriate. But more often what they do is give out a J, or a G, or a D, or perhaps an A. Whatever the case may be, it's usually about finding where it fits. And if you find where it fits with a neighbor or some distant relative, or perhaps a person who's a relative of yours directly, but it goes back several generations, that will be considered to be a hit within modern spiritualism. There is still the general rule that if you look, you'll find where it fits. It sounds benign to the believers, because you're basically saying, oh yes, it all fits, even though it's far from being, well, truly a hit. They might give out a certain time frame, they might give out a decade, they might give out a year, uh, usually they give out something more vague, like a month, so if you can find any event that happened in a month, a birth, a death, you know, an anniversary, something of that kind, so perhaps someone's marriage, or perhaps even someone's divorce, they also, in the spiritualist church, consider that to be a hit. Even though, if you look long enough and hard enough, you're going to find everything in every single month. And even those people who say, I definitely have nothing in this month, if I look back through your past, through your family history, and I looked for that particular time, you will have events. Maybe nothing important, but it goes to show how easily you can make things fit if you look long enough and hard enough. And in spiritualist churches, the bar is even lower than it is with the so-called TV psychic. Very often a time of year is symbolized. So they might feel, oh, okay, I'm feeling like April or March, but which is it? Is it April, is it March? Okay, I'm seeing daffodils with you, so I'm gonna give you the spring because there definitely was a core event in your life and it's relating to another person who's now passed 
in the spring. That's the kind of thing they might well say. It is a very broad statement, a very open statement. It's not anything impressive. But to some people, that is enough. Also over symbolism, like, uh, oh, I'm seeing a deer with you. I'm seeing, um, I'm seeing lambs with you. Yes, I'm seeing young lambs, so that's gonna be the spring, or I'm seeing this, or I'm seeing that. And they will put in a lot of symbolic stuff very often. The broad suggestion is that if information overlaps, it's because there are many spirits with them, or the spirits on the other side have been comparing notes. And as a result, if you get information from different parts of your family, different friends, different places, people you've never met, people you have met, and people you've met in different walks of life, whatever the case may be, different context, it's all because they're sharing information. So if that means you're getting a name from your mother's mother's side of the family, or part of the family, and you're getting stuff to do with your father's father's side of the family, and it shouldn't come together because they had no real contact, or not very much, then it's okay because they've been watching over you and they've been trying to help out and they've been cooperating to look after you. It's basically a way of being an apologist for the inaccuracy of the medium and their message. One kind of cliche I've heard many times is where they claim uh, you would have felt them around you, you would have felt as if there was someone watching you, that uh, they've been watching over you, especially when you've been on your own. Um, this is them and they're just coming through to let you know you were feeling something and you were feeling them. And they might even elaborate and say it feels like a feminine presence. This is either a mother or grandmother. They don't usually tell you which one specifically. If you're very old, they're more likely to say mother. If you're quite young, they're more likely to say grandmother or allow you to say, well, I can accept great-grandmother. Okay. I'd like to come to the lady in the red coat with the turquoise scarf around her neck, please. I have a grandmother here from mother's side of the family. This is yes. your mother's mother and she's linking here with you. A very powerful lady, but um, although she was powerful, she wasn't aggressive in any way, but she was a very clever lady. She was um, learned not in the sense of um, reading books, but in everything that she did. She just had a natural intelligence with her. The lady in the blue, please. Okay, I don't know what I've got for you yet, but I come here with you. I've got father in the spirit world, please. Yes. Linking here very, very strongly with you. What a lovely man. Another cliche that's quite common is where they say things like, you've lost an item recently, and this is them moving things around you to try and prove they're watching over you. And if you look long enough and hard enough, you'll find where something fits. For many believers, this seems to be plausible. I don't really know why, but they basically believe that so-called spirits are moving things around their house. It's not your memory. It's not you rushing around, forgetting things, forgetting where you put stuff. It's basically people, the deceased, the disincarnate, basically moving things around in your home to remind you they exist. Uh, by the way, the same belief is also true of people who believe in fairies, but that's another story. I am joined by a spirit gentleman who's, um, from what I've just heard then, is very loud of nature. Uh, when I say that, that, it's like, in his conversations, he'd be very loud. They tell me to say either Maureen, Marianne, there's an M name. Where's the M connection to you? Either living or past. I have a cousin by the name of Marianne. How old was he? Did he have a, did he have a girlfriend? <laughs> She's ready here. Oh. Is his name Bernard or Barnard? No. Why would he say that? That's our man. Uh, what flavour is it? Where's well, the albatross, isn't it? It's not any bloody flavour. Other things that tend to be cliche are things like pets, which most families have had. Uh, a small black dog, a small white dog, a medium-sized black and white dog. And very often with a spiritualist message, there will be the idea that uh, they're around you to try and help you with something. They've seen that you're dealing with a particular situation right now that you need to have support with and you need to reach out with your thoughts to them and they'll give you the strength to deal with this problem fully. So broadly speaking, the idea is you've got problems around you of some kind. And I might even say I'm seeing letters and I'm not sure if it's to do with money or to do with law. That's a very common thing you see in spiritualist churches. You're dealing with bills, perhaps. You're dealing with a legal situation. It could be a will. It could be uh, something that's owed to you. It could be simply you trying to sort out your car insurance. If you make it fit by looking long enough and hard enough, you will make it fit. And of course, uh, they're looking out for you. So don't worry too much. They're gonna be there trying to help to guide you in the right direction. 
it's not really a rational thinking process. I believe that I'm in touch with my unconscious mind, and that's, um, I believe it's a little bit like, my experience of it is a bit like the way ideas will come into a person's head. People who are curious come along and go and see a service, and it's like, there's a few hymns and maybe a prayer or maybe a silence or whatever the case may be. You know, very accepting environment. They think it works and they're taught how to interpret things and how to make themselves believe that certain things are true, certain things are real. And as a result, they become their own biggest apologist. A professional, skilled medium, trained at the finest college the spiritualists have in the UK. And are they any good? No, they're worse than the average, like, I don't know, tarot card reader. Bad arguments for why things are true, claims of things being true, it's true to me, it's confirmed to me, I know this is the case, and it's like, well, do you? They seem to have an inability to cope with reality, as it is. Are you a showman or are you genuine? If you're genuine, give out genuine stuff. Oh, you can't? You're not that good? Why the fuck are you on a stage? Give out good information? No, it's symbolism. In fact, a lot of it's symbolic. I'm seeing daffodils, I'm getting the beginning of the year. Can, can you take February? You know, it's like, was there an anniversary or birthday or death? And it's like, which was it, you know? Was there an event? That's what they say. Sounds like you're being specific, there was an event. You know, and it's like, uh, or an anniversary of some kind. And it's like, I can't take an anniversary, I can take a death. Oh, but it's, uh, a death would be considered to be an anniversary, and you can make stuff fit. Like, they're, they're coming to a person's head almost like a fully formed idea, and we don't know where it's come from. And um, it's a little bit like that. I think you could call it your intuitive mind, I, I, would, I would think of it. But it's more like an in blending of thought. It's as if my thoughts have been interlaid with another set of thoughts. And it's as if all I really need to do is look within myself. It's a form of introspection that I do. And it's from that I give the information I'm giving. And um, that seems to correspond with what the person um, understands about their person that passed over. If you look long enough and hard enough, you'll find where these generalizations, which usually fit most people, to some degree, if they look long enough and hard enough, will in fact fit.